When it's time to crush your enemies, see them driven before you and hear the lamentations of their women, it must be time for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring an interesting guest on to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play games with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Hey, you like my hat? Nice you like my new hat? Plant. Nice yeah. eggplant there, yeah. yeah my eggplant's showing. I had to figure out what the kids what the kids were making of that eggplant there, and uh, I was I was like, oh, that's an old meme. Okay, our our guest this week is Jeff Talanian. Greetings, true believers. Fantastic, Jeff is the owner of Northwind Adventures. He has worked on Castle Zygag Gag Zygag. Uh, <laughs> how do you pronounce right. that? Zygag. Zygig, okay, Castle Zygig products, and has contributed to the magazines AFS, Flight, Fight, I'm sorry, Fight On, and Knoxpiel. But most notably, he's the creator of the excellent role-playing game Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Second time, I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah. Jeff is Jeff is a good buddy of ours. Uh, we hang out with yeah, him at Total Con. Back. Hanging out with him at Gary Con is fantastic. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so Jeff, um, you know, you, you uh, you're a big fan of the Conan there. I, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I'd say my I started getting into getting into it. Um, I want to say about. 1980 i was attracted to the old um ace paperbacks my i i grew up with two brothers and we shared a room and so um eventually my oldest brother bob me being the youngest my oldest brother bob got his own my my dad built him his own like greg brady bachelor pad down in the basement (laughs) okay so so bob would be down there cranking out like i don't know elvis costello and pink floyd and whatever else that he enjoyed back then and outside of Bob's room, he kept this little bookshelf that had all his paperback novels. And he had, you know, the Lord of the Rings books and Isaac Asimov and all kinds of weird stuff. But there, was all, there were also those, um, those Conan um, ace paperbacks that had the Frank Frazetta covers. And oh, yeah. I, I have to say it was those Frazetta covers that drew me in instantly. You know, like Conan the Conqueror, he's on that horse and he's coming down. It's just, you know fired my imagination when I was a little kid. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So, right, between Frank Frazetta and then, you know, of course, D&D. Like, so for me, yeah, 1980, right? Big year. Big year for fantasy yeah, yeah. for me. So, you know, Conan comes out. The Conan, I started buying Savage Sword of Conan. That's when I started really right. getting into comic same books. Here. And then, um, you know, I started playing D&D that same year. It was just like, and then I got into Frank Frazetta. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like a big year. Oh, I we saw Flash Gordon. Same. That's saw Flash Gordon that year. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Conan was Conan, Conan was eighty, right, or eighty-one. It was right around in there. Yeah, with Arnold, but I don't. Yeah. I didn't see that in the theater. I saw it on VHS when it came out on that. Yeah, you know, my folks, my parents, uh, they they let whatever go. You know, like they weren't real attentive on like. Um, you know, like on movies that I was seeing. So sometimes they, uh, they let it slide. Like I saw, I saw, uh, um, God, what did I say? I saw Caddyshack in the theaters. I saw, uh, I saw Animal House. I saw the like Conan and right. they just dropped me off to see Conan too. There wasn't even an adult in the movie theater. Just let me right. in. You know, they didn't care. Oh, yeah. Um, but that was, that, that was the good, <laughs> good old days. That's funny. But Oh my God, dude, I was so Arnold Schwarzenegger was blowing up at that time and he really he was like a major major influence on my life like like in it's a super big way. I started lifting weights cuz I wanted to be like a bodybuilder and stuff. I mean the whole thing. Right. And um but I was too scrawny. I could I could not put on any weight. I was skinny as could be. Um and and I just I I remember going to the store and buying um when I got a little bit older I would buy uh like these the uh, uh, you know half gallon of ice cream and I would cut it into thirds and every night I would eat a third of that <laughs> trying to put on weight in addition to all the other stuff and I was just like right. jamming food in me and I could not put on a friggin' pound protein was, powders yeah oh I oh god do you remember the old protein powders oh yeah Tasted oh they were like horrible shark. they yeah. were the worst never it was like had eating problem. sand I never ever had that problem. <laughs> 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 I, I wish I could tell you I, I, I knew what you meant. 
Right. What, what it was, what it's like to not be able to put weight on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. But Never you think of that, that, that time period, though, with Arnold, and it was like Conan, the Terminator, the Predator, Commando, all those yeah. movies. It was yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Like, no. Sorry. Sorry. Your scrawny yeah. kid in the 80s. It was just like, you know, it was like a dream come true. Oh yeah! Oh my God, and and bodybuilding was coming in right. That, that was like it was a big thing, you know. Arnold, Arnold, and uh, and crew made it like. Oh yeah! Like Did this, you ever watch Pumping thing. Iron? Oh yeah! Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he's talking to Lou Ferrigno. You'll get bigger, and then yeah. I'll get bigger, and I will always be better than right. you because I'm always like one day ahead of you. And I can work, you can work right. out every day. But I'm gonna work out every day too, Lou. And, and who was the shorter guy that was there, buddy? Frank Franco Colombo? Was yes, that it? Yes, Franco Colombo. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like, and half those guys were in Conan the Barbarian. So, like, uh, you know, like all those big beefy dudes, they were, those were yeah. like all his bodybuilding friends and stuff, like the bad guys and stuff. They were all guys he worked out with in the gym. I didn't realize that. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they, they brought in, I remember, oh, dude, I had the whole thing. I still have, I have the copy. It's not in great shape. I really wish I'd kept it in better shape. But, you know, I was 11, 12. I have a cop, I have the, the Muscle and Fitness Conan the Barbarian edition. I still have it. Oh, really? I, the cover's like missing off of it, but you know, it has all the pictures from the movie and stuff. And I was just like, he. Fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was totally. And, yeah. and I, you know, it didn't hurt anything that I had a, had an older cousin, Stort, and um, he was about, you know, you know, Shamalama Ding Dong, right, Mike? Uh, yes. Yes. I'm familiar. <laughs> We've Stort, met. <laughs> Stort, Stort was about. I think he's about five years older than me and he was really into bodybuilding. And so I'd go over and lift with him. Of course he was like, you know, he got all big and muscular and I was just like, I just kept getting cut more cut, more cut. I look like, uh, uh, I don't know, like more like a Bruce Lee type body than, you, than a You were wiry. I was wiry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> did you ever get into the bodybuilding Jeff? Yeah, I did. I did for a while. I, 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 um, my brother was big time into it. So I would try to emulate him, you know? So, right. but it's, uh, yeah, I did for a long time. Yeah, it, it's uh, man, and it's not for young. It's not for like really young people, especially not scrawny. Like, uh, man, I'm such a, I was, dude. I when I went to high school, I was like a little kid. Like, I don't know about you, but when I got to when I got to ninth grade, I was still like a little kid in um in in high school around all these like, you know, like big dudes. And we our, our school was we had like a very popular football team. Uh, like locally and and uh, yeah. and even somewhat nationally in a lot of ways for for high school football teams, so the, our school attracted a lot of really good football players. Uh -huh. So you can imagine when I go in the locker room for the first time, right? I'd never gone to a locker room before. Like in my junior high, they didn't have that. You know, you didn't have to go get a shower after gym, and they made us. And I go in that shower and like there's these you know full grown black men with beards running around. It's <laughs> envy there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was more like terror. You know, I'm walking <laughs> in and it's just like, hey yo, get out of my way. I'm getting in the shower. It's like, holy shit, these are like men. <laughs> <laughs> like, this isn't right. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Yeah, right. Right. Excuse me. Yeah, because that's about the height I was, right? And they're like, <laughs> what? Well, totally was, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, it, it it was it was it was something, and uh, yeah. So I, I tried to put on weight. I couldn't do it, and it wasn't until dude, I didn't really start putting on weight until I got out of high school. So I was I was like nineteen. Yeah. And I got out and moved out on my own. And uh, I think like in one month I put on 20 pounds. I'm like, whoa, wait. Yeah. And it wasn't like the good 20, you know. <laughs> You're right. Finally, the metabolism slowed down, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we used to have eating contests. We would go to like the, uh, Bob's Big Boy and go to these, you know, these all night, all you can eat. And uh, we yeah. would eat plates of food. And I mean, I would just devour like three plates of food. And right. Nothing. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's where I am today. Where yes. is <laughs> that's there you go that third chin sprouted buddy yes yeah yeah cheers yeah so speaking of which i'm gonna be getting back into it i'm getting back into it uh oh, these are my you, these are my last beers for probably two months oh, wow. mm. yeah I'm, I'm gonna i'm cutting out all the excess calories all that kind of stuff yeah. uh and then once i drop off some weight i'm gonna i'm gonna start working out my phase one is to lose cut back some and then uh and then i'm gonna let me get back into lifting again I, yeah. I i miss it troll troll libby says you're gonna shrink your nuts down and do some steroids is that what he uh what he's asking? <laughs> no steroids no steroids libby no no medication all natural I don't, and jeff I don't he wants to know me. why you don't have a moxie in your hand yeah because i have beer yeah right 
beer trumps moxie, y'all. Well, it all depends on what kind of beer we're talking about. Sewer oh, water sh- trumps no. moxie, but you know, whatever. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> uh, Moxie does trump Vicks. It is a little bit better of a cough medicine than Vicks, but you yeah. know. <laughs> well, you know the the beauty of Moxie around here is when I when I buy it, nobody else drinks it. So oh, okay, the kids, the kids don't touch it. My wife doesn't touch it, so it's it's, it's dad's drink. Oh, nice. That's like, uh, yeah, when I was a when I was a young man, first moved out on my own, I, I like sour stuff. I, I actually really like sour tasting stuff. And um, I would make, I'd buy the little packets of Kool-Aid, you know, like the Sharkleberry and, you know, and all those. And I would make the Kool-Aid without any sugar because my roommates would always drink it. If I made like a big pitcher of Kool-Aid, I'd come down like an hour later and it'd all be gone. I'd be like, you mother. So I would make it Started. without sugar. Oh, I thought you started adding grain alcohol, but that was later. That was at parties. Um, no, at, I would I would start making it without any sugar in it at all, and they were like, "Oh, it's awful! What do you drink that?" I'm just like, eh, "It's all mine." <laughs> right, <laughs> I wouldn't right. touch it, and they were too lazy to put sugar. They could have just they could have just put sugar in it and drank it, but no, it's too much work. Right. You win. Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, I, I brought that to my daughter once, and uh, I I didn't know it had no sugar in it, and you know I made her the Kool Aid, and she was she thought it was the most disgusting thing in the world. She's like, "What's wrong with this Kool Aid?" <laughs> like, I don't know what's wrong. Kool Aid. <laughs> Drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> Jay says Moxie puts hair on your chest, but you know what, Jay? I don't I don't need no more yeah. none. No, <laughs> good, mm-hmm. good, covered. And mm-hmm. maybe your back. Oh, I don't need that either. <laughs> Yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> I think I, I must have showered in Moxie some time ago. <laughs> Mike puts it on in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> right. It just all, all right, misses so, my head, though. So, so getting back, getting back to Conan the Barbarian. Um, so, did you did, were you a big fan of Howard? Did you like, did you like read the books and stuff? Yeah, well, I started re- by reading those those books, but uh, you know, but it was also, you know. At, at that age, in 1980, I was only nine years old, so I probably didn't understand much of what I was reading. I think right. it was by the time I was in middle school when I was reading those books that it really clicked with me. But um, so if, I would say early on, it, it was more of the comic books that really grabbed my attention, yeah. you know, especially those savage sort of Conan magazines. Oh. Oh, I still got, I still got all of them. All the ones that I bought, I kept them all. Yeah. I have all this, like the big, you yeah. know, came in the big... Um, they're like the biggest die, what they call digest size. I can't. Well, they were magazine size. They would yeah. digest at the tiny size. So they oh, right, the, they were magazine size. Right, right. Yeah, they were magazine size. And I loved them. Did Did they ever do crossovers with Conan going like into the future or yes. modern day? Oh, did yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. There yeah, was Marvel Comics did some what ifs. Yeah. Okay. Know, like what if Conan fought Wolverine and things like that. See now, right. that's what I could have gotten into had I known about it because I was just not the big, the biggest fantasy. Um, guy, which is why I'm sort of just like making jokes here in the background. But that's why. Just fine. talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> right. But, okay, so yeah, so Savage Sword, you know, I never got into the books. Like, I try, um, I never read them when I was younger, just much like you. I was kind of like, oh. Um, I was really big into the comics and the movies. Uh, but when I, I tried reading the books recently, like, I actually was like, you know what? I've never read the, I've never actually read the novelization, you know, the Conan novels. Right. And I started, I started reading them and I was kind of like, Hmm. I don't know if I actually like the Conan novels quite as much. Um, oh, I absolutely, I absolutely love them. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, but some of my favorite Howard stories, and are not necessarily Conan. Uh, some of them is uh, Brand MacMorn and Solomon Kane, and um, and um, El Borak. There, there are so many different um, uh, heroes that he had in his tales that would, you know, not necessarily all Conan. Right, right, and and did, was he was he able to get away from writing like kind of sort of one kind of character and storyline? Uh, like I love Burroughs, right? But when you read Burroughs, it's really all just kind of variations. It's the, on same the same formula, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's all the kind of the same. I would formula. say that Howard was writing for the pulps at the time, so he was he was writing to you know pay the bills where he lived in in Texas, and. Um, and but he definitely started to branch out as he got older, um, closer to thirty because you know he he died at the age of thirty about, and um, so he was doing he, as he got older he was starting to do more boxing tales and he was starting to branch out off into some westerns and things like that. So right, wait a minute. He, <clears throat> so he di- I didn't know that he died he died very young then. Oh yeah, yeah. He committed suicide. 
Really? Yeah. Oh man, well that sucks. I yeah. guess he never he probably didn't realize that he would be, you know, who he who he turned out right. to be. Now, if you look at all the volumes of work, like uh for example, in in recent years um Del Rey has collected a lot of his works. Not everything. They haven't done the boxing tales and they haven't done some of his um like his other um, lesser known stuff, but as far as like Cull and Conan and Brand MacMorn and Solomon Kane, um, and and also a couple of volumes of his horror stories, he also wrote a lot of horror stories because he started to get as he got older, he started to um, join that clique with H. P. Lovecraft and Lovecraft's circle of writers for and the pulps. But um, when you look at that whole body of work that he produced um, from about the age of twenty to thirty. It's amazing. You see authors who can't produce this much stuff in their entire lifetimes. Right. You know, it's just a huge volume of work. Right. Right. So, so when he got, yeah, he started... it's not, it's not, it's not diarrhea of the mouth either. It's he, right. he, he could be very concise too. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's high impact action a lot of the time. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> they might have less distractions than we do today. Maybe they didn't, you know, they didn't have the Facebook and all the TV shows and all that right, kind of right, stuff. Like right. sitting around, like looking at the wall, like, hmm, what am I going to, what am I going to do tonight? Oh, maybe I'll write a right. story. <laughs> right, right. You know, it was him and his typewriter on his porch. Basically. But, right. You know, it's, it's funny you say that, Pete, but like I think about that and I think there's probably a lot of movie producers and movie directors who are constantly <laughs> shooting movies and actors. They probably, as creatives, don't have a lot of time to watch TV and stuff either. Not that I'm poo-pooing you or anyone else of us, but, you know, because I'm, I'm the worst. But I don't know. I'm just giving a little you know, <laughs> counter. Yeah, well, you know, what, I'll, to be honest with you, you know, I'm watching more TV now in the past couple of years than I have watched in probably the last, I don't know, 10 to 15 years. In the last 10 to 15 years – up until just recently because it's been just because it's been such a slew of really good TV which is killing me because I'm just kind of like you're killing me with all this good TV um I didn't really I would watch one show a season so I would watch like I and and I would I would pick like my favorite thing and it was on purpose it's like I'm only going to watch one show during a season uh, you know and I would watch like I would watch Walking Dead and then I would watch uh, Game of Thrones because Game mm-hmm. of Thrones would always start right after Walking Dead ended and then when Game of Thrones was done there was a couple months and then Walking Dead would start back up again well, and I basically just kind of one show at a time well think about how much more accessibility we have now think of where we yeah. were 15 years ago or 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 earlier when we had to, if we wanted to watch something, a series, if we weren't home, if we were busy, we had to tape it on a VCR oh, and then yeah. we had to oh, rewind yeah. the tape and watch it okay. in that format. Now we have the DVRs, we have Netflix and yes. we don't have to watch commercials if we don't want to. We can pause a show 25 minutes into it and then, you know, take, take up where we left off the next time around. We have right. so much, e- it's so much easier now than it was before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and, and like, for example, here's a good example. So, I'm watching Walking Dead. I'm trying to give up on Walking Dead. I mean, I keep thinking I'm going to give up on it because it's like it's getting boring. It's just I'm getting, I, I like. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not trying to bash a show. I haven't I, watched I actually, the season. I haven't. Yeah, I, I stopped. I, I like the show, but I'm just kind of like, eh, eh, I get kind of tired of it. You know, it's kind of the same old shit over and over again. And um, so so I, I'm trying to. I don't know. I think I'm going to pry myself away from it at some point. But then they came out with this. AMC came out with this show called The Terror. And it's you know oh, it's about okay. this icebreaker. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, fuck! I watched it last night. Now I'm like, God damn it! Now I'm hooked. Right? <laughs> like yeah, one show good? in, it's good. Oh, it's really good. It's very very okay. good. Yeah, um, I want to see that. I don't know where they're going with it, but so far the you know the acting and the scenery, and all that that is the top notch. They haven't really gone anywhere with the story quite yet, but it's you know it's engaging. It's it's very good. Yeah. Um, cool. And I'm just like, stop making good stuff. You know, it's like, <laughs> um, you know, you watch the. I mean, I guess I could have done without Iron Fist. That wasn't that was kind of a for me. My opinion is that was kind of a waste of time. I could have done without watching that one. Luke Cage was good, uh, yeah. You know, but but there's all these shows like like all these like really good shows. I, I um, have not started yet. Has have either of you two gentlemen uh, started with the um, Jessica Jones second I, season? I have started it. No. Uh, yeah, I, I started it. It's all right. So far, okay. it's not as good as the first one. As as deep as I am into it now. The first one, as deep as I was, was better. I, I don't know. It could they could turn out to be good? It may not. I, I don't know. I, it's it's kind of. Eh, it's all right. That's right. yeah, on Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. It's another one. All right. So, so uh, 
So anyway, so we talked about Total Con and we talked about Gary Con, like going to those. And and so, so Jeff, when you when you go to when you go to like both these cons, you probably go to a bunch of a bunch of cons, a bunch more than than we do. Um, no, not really. Not I only really? do about four, four per year. Okay, all right. Um, but like Total Con is your that's your mainstay. That's right up in your neck of yeah, woods. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and Gary Con, you, you think you might be going to Gary Con next year? Oh yeah, I go to every Gary Con and I go to okay. every Total Con. Those are my okay. two new mainstays. I got you. Okay. So, so uh, what are you flipping on? What are you flipping back and forth to on on the other uh, other two? Uh, well, I I did uh, in November. I did um, Game Hole Con in okay. Madison, Wisconsin, the last few years. But I've also in November I also do um, Carnage. But it's, so for me, it's either one of one or the other. Game Hole is is uh, what's his name? Alex, right? Alex yes, Cameron. yes, Alex yep. Cameron. Yes, yep. That's uh, our buddy. We we love him. Shout but, out, Alex. Yes, Alex is a great guy. I love him. Yep. Um, we actually game together at um, GaryCon. Oh, um, so, um, but Carnage for me is a lot closer to home and a lot uh, easily accessible. So mm-hmm. I like that one. And uh, in June, I do um, North Texas RPG Con, which is the, the oh. shirt I'm wearing right now, actually. Oh, there you <laughs> uh, go. Okay. That's a nice little con. It's a small attendance, but it uh, it's, has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, talented game designers who flock to that con every year. Um, it's a, it's, it's nice, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth area. Right. Yeah. I keep hearing about that one. That's the only one I, that, that I know people that go to it that I haven't, I have no, like, I don't know, no, no, like kind of like involvement with it. Like, so for example, um, so, so game hole con, right. I know Alex, we've had him on the show a couple of times. Uh, I would love to go to game hole. I would love to go to that convention. I just can't seem to make it happen. Um, I'm thinking, I'm just trying, you know, because I've got you let your you let your finances get a little out of order sometimes, right. and I'm I'm in the repair mode, uh, not real bad, but I'm just I don't want to get real bad. Uh, so this year, um, you know, I I did the cons I'm going to do. I'm going to do Balticon, and then that's it for the year. But Balticon's like right in my backyard, so it's no big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think next year, I think I'm going to make it a point to go to Game Hole Con, uh, and uh, there's another one called Grand Con that I really would like to go to. Um, Where's uh, that? Brian, uh, that is, uh, hey Mike, help me out with that. What is that? Um, it's the Midwest. It's uh, damn it. Um, I'll say it's near Milwaukee. I think. Uh, I I can't. I, I, yeah, I, that's just about where I was gonna say Milwaukee, somewhere Wisconsin. Yeah, it's it's somewhere. It's out in that region. Um, I know the guy Brian. He's a really cool guy. You know, I, I uh, we interviewed him, uh, f- I think twice, uh, and it, it sounds like a great convention. It sounds like a really good time. That he, and he puts on a great convention. I'd love to go. He he wants us to come out. He'd love to have us come out. Oh, that's nice. Um, not enough to pay for us to come out, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean you got to be a draw. You got to bring people in. You know, yeah, I, I understand. Exactly. I, I con you got to be you got to make it worth the cons time. I get that. Help um, us. Help us. Help you. Help us. Right, right. So I would love to get out to those too, um, but but especially uh, but especially a game home. So next year I think I'm gonna make it a point. I don't care whether Alex can bring me out or not. Maybe he could, maybe he could hook me up with like a pass or something if I do some shows at his at his convention. You know, yeah, maybe get a media pass. Have, yeah, that'd be cool. A media pass yeah. would be good. I like that. What do you think, Mike? You think you can make that journey? Uh, it depends on how many teeth I have to have uh, rooted, rooted and canals. Oh, what is with your mouth, man? What have you been eating? Uh, evidently, <laughs> I'm drinking a lot of moxie. Okay, <laughs> I would say you have no moxie. You're right. like, yeah, your teeth got no moxie, dude. Um, so, <laughs> so Jeff, moxie. tell me, what, what's the difference for you between between Total Con and Gary Con? Like in your in your mind, what do you think? What do you think is the big difference well, between those two for you? Um. Well, Total Con feels like home, okay, because it's so close to home, and I see so many people that I know there that um, people that I've gotten to know in, in our local area. So it's just a level of comfort, um, you know, with fellow New Englanders. You know, there's so many people from um, northern New England that I see there from, you know, New Hampshire and Massachusetts and Vermont and just so many familiar faces. Right. Gary Con is is different for me because because the the whole idea of Gary Con is honoring Gary Gygax, whom I'd been working with um, when he had passed away. So I was working with him up until that time, and and 
and um, in the aftermath of that, I got to become close friends with Luke Gygax, and Luke does a wonderful job putting together this whole venue for gamers to celebrate Gary's life and Gary's um, accomplishments, which, I mean, the, it's, a, it's a microcosm, basically, of what Gary did, was, which, which was to bring people together to game. Right. Yep. And uh, is it's such a brilliant guy and, and such a uh, delight and honor to have known him for the brief time that I did. And so for me to go to Gary Con, it, it's just it feels different because I feel like I feel like, you know, that we're all there and we're honoring this, you know, the, this great inventor of our hobby. Right. Yeah. Let me ask you something, so, Jeff, for for you. And having probably like, have you been to just about every uh, GaryCon? Yeah, I've been to all of them. Well, except for GaryCon Zero, which was because right. I didn't, I didn't make it to um, Gary's um, funeral, which is what where GaryCon Zero sort of came oh, out of okay. at the time. It was right. like you know, like hey, the funeral's over, let's get a bunch of gamers together and hang out. And so that's how GaryCon Zero, you know. So, do started. you think that um, GaryCon is still keeping its original? um mission and and sort of warmth uh i know it's been getting much much bigger i mean it was it was bigger than we even thought it was going to be we were pleasantly surprised when when we went um and i say that i was with pete uh what was that two years ago pete and pete again went this year yes. so um it, it are you though thinking is or are you do you have a fear even that gary Khan could just get too big or do you think um, that they're always going to keep that sort of feel I don't know. I think that may be a better question for Luke. And I think Luke would pr probably give you a pretty straightforward answer about that. And my suspicion is that um, there is still some room to grow at their current venue there at the, um, at the Geneva resort. But um, I don't know that they really want to grow beyond that. I'm not sure if Luke actually wants that. I don't think he wants to follow the trajectory of Gen Con, which is to go from that location oh, to Milwaukee, you know, and then ultimately Indianapolis. Um, but to, yeah, to answer your question, I, I I feel like the original mission is still there. The original okay. mission being, let's get gamers together to throw dice and talk in funny voices to have a lot of fun because this is what Gary wanted us to do. Good. Right. So whether you're playing AD and D or you're playing Call of Cthulhu or you're playing Paranoia. Or you're playing a superhero game, whatever it is. Swords and Swordsman of Hyperborea. I mean, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, one of those games. Game you're happy to be playing some game. Yeah. yeah. Right. Whatever it is. Um, so did. That's the point, I think. Did you um did did you ever get a chance to actually like play a game with Gary? Did I know you guys worked together? Yeah, but yeah. did you actually ever? Were you ever able to squeeze a game in? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, um, I got to actually one time got to play on his porch with him, which was pretty cool playing at his house. Um. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, you know, I, of course, at the time, you don't realize that this is, you know, the first and last time you're going to play yeah. a D&D &D game with Gary on his porch. Right. But, uh, but it's definitely a fond memory of mine. Okay, cool. You know, um, you know, they, they uh, so Dave reminded me, and this, I, I knew this, uh, but Joe Maganellio, uh, the, the actor, you know, who, who was in True Blood, uh, he's a big D and D fan, and he's he's been uh, doing stuff with I think like with Wizards and stuff, and with Geek and Sundry and and all. And apparently, uh, Luke played a game with him. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's funny the celebrities that are starting to come out and and support uh, Dungeons yeah. and Dragons and, and right. Geek culture books. is suddenly cool. It's okay to to admit that you have these books uh, in your attics and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And it, so you know, so it's more acceptable now. I mean, I think it also stems from you know, comic book culture is more acceptable now. You look at how, you know, I think of how what comic book conventions were like in the '80s and the '90s, oh, yeah. and compared to now that they're these pop culture sensations. I mean, San Diego Comic Con, of course, was a pop culture sensation for decades now, but the regular, whether even even New York Comic Con, it was just you know, it was, you know, a bunch of, uh 20 to 40 50 something men you know pouring through white boxes of comic books and looking for back issues and it was it wasn't this great big pop culture sensation that it, that it is now and i i think that kind of plays a role in with things too that um that geek culture is uh fun and ex more more acceptable these days yeah yeah and 
you know, and, and I'm just I'm happy to I'm happy to be like be be a part of it uh, during this during this time. It's very exciting. Um, you know, when I in 1980 when I started playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, that was my first game, and I and I played played that for a couple of years, and I and I actually I actually moved away from Dungeons and Dragons. I, you know, I, I before I've said I move on. I moving on makes it sound like I, like I moved. I went to something better, and that's not the case. I moved away from it and started doing things like Champions and Cyberpunk. And sure, all that yeah, stuff. we did all that too. But I never, I never kind of went back. I never actually went back to Dungeons and Dragons. I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons in forever. Um, but but I, I recognize its place in the iconography and the history and the importance of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, that's cool that it's still around. Uh, right. And, and I think it's great to be a part of it at this time. And and I'm finally, finally actually joining. You know the the ranks of those who create stuff at this point. Oh, very nice. And Mike will tell you, been working on stuff forever. But it. <sighs> Yeah, it's always been yes. my the thing is I've always I've always had this this philosophy that I don't want to ever create anything that's a, a a rehash or a um you know or just another take on 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 X, right? Whatever whatever that is. Like um I wanted to come up with something revolutionary. Like I just, I want to do something really really cool. Like I just, you know, and I know you don't need to do that. You know, everybody's take on something is, is just as valid as anyone else's. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, because otherwise there wouldn't be 5,000 fantasy games, right? right. Um, but but uh, but I for me, I, it was my personal mission. It's like I'm not going to release anything that's not fucking like when people play it, they're going to just be like, holy shit, this is crazy cool, right? And I've finally done that. I have finally made. Oh, very nice. You know, it's not done, obviously. Uh, I'm working on it, it in the needs background. needs to be. Oh, are we still talk, are we talking about Cube of Death? Oh no, no, no. Cube of Death is Cube of Death happened by accident. That that was that just kinda happened. I was doing stuff That's at a, a convention. Game. That it got is. in his way when he was creating his <laughs> yeah. his role playing game. Yeah. Which yeah. needs to be finished. Oh no, dude, I, I got a full on balls on role playing game, unique system, unique setting, unique I mean, it is badass. And it is it's it's a fantasy, but it's it's a totally different take. If you play it, you'll just be like, "Holy shit!" Completely different feel. This is not not like anything I've ever played. Um, and and I did not want to, you know. And I've gone through inter- iterations of this game and said, "Nope, it's not there yet. It's not there yet." I mean, in years and years. And I think right. I think I got it. And then I'd play it and I'd be like, "Okay, yeah, it's different, but it's uh, it's not it's not good," you know, because it was like it was it was one of the guys said. And that's not what it is now. This is what it was then. He said, um, "He said, yeah, it's it's kind of neat. It's kind of like you turn people into Mecca." And I was like, "Oh, that's not what I was going for. <laughs> that's not what I was going for." Um, but but where I am now is oh, it's going to be great. awesome. Wait, wait till I you mean, see I, next year. I we, you and I, <laughs> we gearheads that we were, would have loved it. Yeah, you know what I mean back then. But it you, that that was a very good comment, and I think the way you've modified the system, which you know needs to be finished, so that I we know. can start. Like I will, I will. If it's done next time we go to TotalCon, I'll run like those games. I'll run playtest games for you. I should. I'm. I'm hoping. My goal is to be at a playtest, like a a beta playtest phase by next TotalCon. So I should have. I, my goal now oh, wow. is to get is to get Cuba Death off my plate, get it done, get it out, yep. right, and then that's it. The only thing I work on from there on, except for this show. And, and, you know, like keeping the TSR podcast network going. Other than that, uh, it's going to be this. That's all I'm going to be oh, working no. on. AetherCon? Oh, no? No AetherCon? No AetherCon? No? No. <clears throat> so, um, well, I'm going to – anyway. So um, – <laughs> Let's not go there. So, so Laura, uh, uh, Laura Nicole is is in the is in the chat room, and I, and I, I want to make a mention of this because uh, she's helping out with the TSR Podcasting Network. Uh, her and James are going to be bringing back Game School, so we're hoping in June that the two of them will will resurrect Game School. And and uh, Jeff, I'd like to invite you to be the first game that they run. Absolutely. All right. All right. Be cool. My pleasure. So, so so we'll we'll get you so season two episode one will be uh will will be Jeff's game uh, astonishing swords and sorcerers or hyperborea uh, Laura I know you're watching right now you're gonna love it it's a great game you're gonna you're gonna really dig it I mean because she's a big D and D player it it'd be you know it'll be right up your alley so so it'll be sure. good. Um, so let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, astonishing swordsmen and sorcerers or hyperborea or, or hyperborea as some people call it. Sure. Uh, let's tell tell our audience about that. Uh, well, I started to develop it um, shortly after the Castle Zagig um, projects were 
taken off the table. Um, I had basically had a, a lot of um, assignments that I had been working on for Gary at the time. And then um, after he passed away, um, um, those projects all dried up. And so I was left with a blank slate. And um, I had decided that I wanted to um, have a game that was mechanically similar to the old school type of playing, the Gygaxian style of play that I grew up playing. But I wanted the the tone, the theme to be um, more sword and sorcery, more more of a narrow focus of that uh, Robert E. Howard. And I was also getting a lot into Clark Ashton Smith at the time, who wrote some really uh, weird stuff uh, back, back in the uh, 1930s. And um, and also H.P. Lovecraft and and uh, other, other authors that uh, influenced me at the time. But I also also took into account the whole mythology mythology that uh, that Gygax and Arneson created through through D and D. So that was also a, a you know a huge influence on me. So I wanted to sort of press that all together into a sword and sorcery type of uh, themed game. Um, so Hyperborea sort of came about from that. Um, it's also somewhat inspired by the uh, the Greek myths of what Hyperborea is. Um, Hyperborea in the old um, Greek mythology uh, means beyond the North Wind. Oh. And so that's kind of where my company name comes North from Wind Adventures. as well, okay. North Wind Adventures. So it all kind of plays together. Nice. And uh, so, I, so I wanted to do a game that was like, you know, played like a hardcore old school dark type of game. Uh, no elves or hobbits or things like that. And, and just a sort of dystopic, um, hard edge sword and sorcery type of game. Um, and, and, and that's what we've been doing ever since. And, um, you know, since then been, um, uh, came out with a box set for the game, but the box set sold out. So we went to a hardback for it, uh, uh, this past year in uh, November of 2017. And, um, and but between the box set and the hardback, we did some adventures, and um, now we're doing a few more adventures. That a couple of which we're kickstarting right now as we speak. That yeah. they've been live for about ten days. Oh, and, I did um, not know that, Pete. Yeah, I, so you I could find not... it. Oh, okay. It's called. Um, if you look it up on Kickstarter, it's called Hyperborea Beasts and Cannibals. Yeah. And uh, so it's it's going strong. It's featuring two new adventures. Uh, one that's by um, Tim Callahan. Um, I met Tim through Total Con. Tim is um, um, I know that name. Local... yeah. Tim Tim runs uh, Tim runs some Hyperborea. He runs some DCC, yeah. and um, he goes to Total Con. I think he I think this is the first year that he missed in a long time. Um, he also goes to Carnage, um, and um, he um, you know became a fan of the game, and then approached me about um, doing a little writing for it, and I was impressed with what he came up with he's actually um, a high school principal so it's, it's, <laughs> nice. yeah so it's i mean it's all walks of life the people who are are into into our hobby well when i think when i first met him and we started uh, uh talking he was uh, he was a teacher and uh, he in the last couple of years he got into administration nice. um, and then um the other adventure that we're coming out with is written by a uh, man by the name of Corey walden who's out of new zealand so I mean, that's the that beauty of the internet that you could, you know, meet these fellow gamers from everywhere. And so many people have creative ideas from different parts of the world, you know? Right. So yeah. um, we got some uh, great art. We got, um, uh, we got Del Tigler back and um, Jonathan Bingham. And um, we also um, have Peter Mullen, uh, Jason Schultes. Uh, just a, a whole bunch of uh, great artists who have contributed to uh, uh, past works before who are all throwing in with this new project. And um, it's really, it's really working out well. Uh, we brought in a new guy this year too, uh, Diogo Nogueira, who's out of Brazil. Um, he's, uh, he's a great young artist and he's got amazing stuff. So we have just like a, a, like a whole family of artists that we kind of keep together, but then we branch out a little bit and bring in a new guy once in a while. Right. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of fun right now. Yeah, I, I just want to you know let the audience know that when you said you got a hardback, okay, just just so people have an idea, you could take this hardback, okay, and you could put it in a catapult and like actually <laughs> use it as siege rocks. This fucking thing, it's like right. this thick, right? I mean, right? It's, it's, it's um six hundred six. It's six hundred sixteen pages. So uh, so I get this every almost every day where someone from, say, the UK or someone from Australia will, will email me and say, why does the 
book cost as much to ship it as the cost of the book itself. And I'll have to say, <laughs> well, because the book weighs five pounds. That's why. Right. <laughs> so you know what you should do, Jeff? I, I think you should you should get in touch with Jason Elliott. He has he has a um, a process that uh, for dis- distribution in other countries. Mm-hmm. that he uses he might be able to give you some pointers on like say if you do another kickstarter you order another set of books um you know it it's uh so that what would happen is you'd buy the books and they would actually go to that distributor in europe first and it would bring right. your european and such costs down and yeah. it's it gets a little h- h- hinky and you yeah. know he, by the time you would talk to him about it he'd have some experience with it and maybe he could sure. say hey yeah this is a good idea is a bad idea or whatever but i know for top secret he has overseas distributors in local well, like, with, with um with the, with copies there I have some European retailers. I have like Leisure Games out of the UK and I have Trollheim out of Germany who are, who are both selling the book and have put in reorders a number of times now. So um, a lot of times I point my international customers over to those guys and they can save themselves a lot of money in shipping. Oh, good idea. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, oh, that's, you know, that is a good idea, having the re- have the retailers because when they're going to buy something from a distributor, they're going to they're gonna get all everything from that distributor at one time and their shipping costs per unit are going to be a lot lower. Right. So it, it works out. It works out better. So yeah. that's a good idea. It's fantastic because yeah, they can go online and buy it from them online and probably sure. ship from there to them is easy. Right, exactly. Yeah, all right, fantastic. So you got you got Beast and Cannibals. So what is Beast and Cannibals? What is, what, uh, what, what kind of... It's, it's it's adventure. You said two adventures. What, well, that's two adventures. So that's what I call the that's what I call the the um the campaign. So um one of the adventures is called the Anthropophagi of Zambala, which is um, inspired by an old nice. Conan tale. Anthropophagi okay. basically means in the old uh, Greek language it means man eater. So it's a basically mm. cannibals, and right. it's a it's a story about um it's it's basically an introductory adventure that's uh that. It's funny because we've been doing, we we first published this game in 2012 and uh, besides one little short adventure called Rats on the Walls, which is inspired by the old Lovecraft tale, Rats on the Walls, yep. that was a really tiny adventure. But other than that, we really haven't had an appropriate full length um, starter module that's for first through third level characters. And right. um, this is what uh, the Anthropophagi of Zimbal is going to do. It's going, it, it basically... Um, um, a large portion of that module is dedicated to the city of Zambala. So it can provide characters a starting home base in this sort of um, rough and tumble city that's on the uh, the edge of a desert. Right. And um, that have this growing problem of um, you know, people disappearing and, uh, and drum beats in the night and uh, these horrific screams and all these things happening. And, uh, and there's different hooks to get the players involved right. with why they may, may want to help resolve this problem that's going on. And that's the one by Corey Walden, whom I'd mentioned earlier. Um, the other adventure is called um, the, um, the Beasts of Cragath Manor, and that's the one by Tim Callahan. Um, that's an um, adventure module for characters of fourth through sixth level. And it's kind of a, um, a, a a strange type of horror type setting. It's um, it takes place um, in the sort of wilderness that's north of the main city in Hyperborea, which is called Cromarium. It's it's several miles north of that, out in the wilderness, and it sort of involves this old sort of house that was established by this rich family many generations ago, and that family had this sort of um, dark history to them where they would you know basically hold up in this house and sort of there's a mystery involved with finding out whatever happened to this family and so the the player characters get i don't want to spoil the whole adventure you know i'm just trying to give it it. given given kind of the setup for it you know right and so it's about it's about getting to you know finding out what happened to this family and what's going on in their in their old manor house and so it's 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 kind of one of that uh, that type of uh feel to it and uh, yeah, so Tim uh, Tim Callahan did a fantastic job with that adventure, and uh, so yeah, we have two different, you know, two completely two different types of um, of themed adventures there, and uh, I think people are gonna gonna like them. All right, cool, fantastic. All right, so uh, so we're, we're we're running up on time because we got to get to, we got to get to the game, but um, so so what are some links? Give me some links on how to get to your stuff. Like, how do people find you and your Kickstarter and your page and your game and all yeah, that sure. good stuff? Um, you can find all of it uh, through my main website, which is www.hyperborea.tv. 
and TV? then from there you can you can yes and then okay. from there you can go to the kickstarter page is right on our front page you can click to it from there um you can also find um astonishing swordsmen and sorcerers of hyperborea on facebook twitter google plus the, us the usual haunts um, and then, of course, we've been plugging the Kickstarter like crazy there in, in uh, the last couple of weeks. Okay. So it's easy to find where we are. All right, cool. Fantastic. All right, so this is this is really cool. I mean, the book, I, I've seen the book myself, held it in my hands. It's, it is amazing. It, it really, It's a really amazing, good book. It's solid. It's got a bookmarky thing in it. Um, yeah. It, you have it's, a 32 by 40 inch full color map that's in it that folds out. That's a map of the campaign setting. It, it's top notch. How, how much is that book? If I were to buy it, it's um, it's seventy dollars. Seventy dollars, right? But you yes. know what? It's totally worth it. The thing I'm telling you, it's like this thick, right? right? And it's hardback. It's super good quality. Like all the, the you know, the binding on it is is it uh, stitch yeah, binding? It's, yeah, it's Smith's own binding. So it's, oh, it's Jesus. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, heavy duty paper stock. Um, right. It has the satin ribbons in it. It um, a nice matte finish cover. Um, it's really we went all out, and uh, but a lot of that actually was um, stretch goals that we set in in the Kickstarter for that hardback, and we, um, you know, to my delight, we reached a lot of those stretch goals and were able to add these extra, um, you know, incentives and you know just to add to the quality of the book. And you only need this book, right? This is the only book you need to play the game. Like there isn't right, like, this book right. and it's, Monster Manual and all that kind of stuff. Right. right? It's all contained in, in one hardback. You have all your uh, character creation. You have your monsters. You have your magic items. You have your spells. You have a gazetteer of the setting. Um, in the appendix, we have a starter adventure for first, first level characters. It's a, a short adventure. Right. Uh, there's pre, pre-gens in one of the appendix that you can just you start playing with if you wanted to. It's its, its own tall DM screen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right. And, and you know, because if you think about it, if you were to buy like a player's handbook, a monster manual, you know, DM's guide, all that shit, you'd be 120 bucks right there in. Right, right. Easily. And then, you know, any other books you'd want to buy and an adventure and all that kind of stuff, you know, up and up and up and up and up. And you're already at half that, you know. Right, right. So it's a good deal. It's a good deal. It's a good book. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. I think I so. I it. think so. And don't forget to go back to Kickstarter. It's good adventures. Um, go, you know, buy the game and then, you know, buy, buy, buy Jeff's book and then back to Kickstarter. Do right, both. right. <laughs> well, the, I think adventures are the driving force of a good um, campaign. You know, it and pe some people will use the adventures in a Hyperborea campaign. Some people will use it with some other gaming system. Um, but they're, they're great, solid adventures. And I think that they're good fodder for any campaign. And do, um, but just real quick, do, uh, could, could they use, let's say, let's say somebody was like, ah, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not ready to switch systems, but, uh, I'd like to get these adventures. Are they easy to convert over to 5e? Yeah, I, they're, 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 they're actually a decent amount of people who use my stuff for 5e. I think it's more difficult to do the reverse. I think it's more difficult to take a a Pathfinder or a 5e adventure and convert them back to an older school game. I think that takes a little more work. Um, I think it's easier to expand stat blocks and things like that from, from an old school game to a newer school game. Right. So they can buy it. They can buy They can back your Kickstarter and get this and play it with 5e if they're playing that. Cause you don't care. Give me your money, right? <laughs> <laughs> Show me right. the money. All right. Fantastic. All right. So we're going to play a game. Uh, I got to do these in a certain order here. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got to hope this works because I moved something and I was like, oh shit, I moved it now. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's good. All right. Yay. It's game time yay. with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant. In this episode, we are playing Schwarzenegger Soundbite Madness. Oh, I God. will play a soundbite from a Schwarzenegger movie, and you must tell me what movie it's from. If you get it right, you get a point. Ties go to the guest. So, Mike, you gotta you got to beat Jeff by one point. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, so, 
what I will do is I will I will go down the line and I will I will give each of you and I'll let you know ahead of time. I'll give each of you a sound bite. You, all you got to do is tell me what Schwarzenegger movie it's from. Some of these. How are hard, hard could this be? What? How hard could it be? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Some <laughs> esoteric kindergarten cop, you know, yeah. piece of dialogue. I, I have like, tried I, to use sound bites that you could identify but aren't too easy. Like I'm not gonna have get to the chopper because that's just too easy. Okay. Uh, some of them uh, are. A few of these are really easy because it just is what it is, you know. I mean, the movies are maybe the movies iconic enough that no matter what the person says, uh, that soundbite is just going to give it away. But now, that is what it is. Is this? Can I just clarify something? Will these be movies that conceivably Arnold Schwarzenegger was in, or are these all Arnold Schwarzenegger movies? Because there is a slight no. nuance and difference there. No, these are all Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. These are all movies that will be billed with. Arnold star. Schwarzenegger as the main star, All and right. most of these, most of these are older movies during his classic period. I didn't pick any of these newfangled movies that he's doing that nobody really knows about anymore. Gives or, a crap, yeah, right. Or gives a crap about, right? These are all during his heyday. Okay. So, without further ado, let's go. All right. So, uh, I am going to, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with Mike. Mike, you got the scoreboard up, right? So you're ready to yes, go. Yes, sir. Scoreboard uh, is it's a just go. one point, man. Get it right or get it wrong, right? Um, oh, well, didn't you just go simple? <laughs> yeah, I kept it simple this time. All right. Oh, hey, you know what? I, I didn't mention, like, you see my shirt? Okay. Yes. yes. So anyway, so so we'll start with Mike so that Jeff can, can see how we do this. Sure. All right. So Mike, here's your first one. Ready? Yes. Where's my wife? Uh, uh, true Lies. Mike, that is ah. incorrect. That was uh, Mr. Freeze, Batman and Robin. Oh, wow. That one was a little hard. That was a little hard. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a little hard. Okay. Payback's a bitch, huh? <laughs> All right, Jeff, here's your first one. What? Mike, it's not a tool, Mark. You're going you're gonna to punch me right in the taint. Here we go. If I die, I have to go before him. And he will ask me. What is the riddle of steel? <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, nah, no, nah, right? <laughs> wow. Conan. Okay. Conan. That one was tiny bit abstract. I didn't use, like, classic Conan quotes right. that people would just recognize. Unless yeah. you're a big Conan fan, you wouldn't get that. Like, Mike, yeah. you might not have gotten that one. Maybe not, but, you know, just you, classic Mr. Freeze. I, oh, my God, I can't tell you how right. classic that was. I know. All right. Wow. Okay, all right, so give Jeff a point. <laughs> Check it. Okay, sure. All right, so. All right. <laughs> sorry. So Mike. now, Mike, you need two to win. All right. Yes. So, Mike, I'm sorry. I've, I've got, in the last round of this, I got one where you can bet multiple points. All right, so, Mike, here you go. Here's your second one. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach. Oh, shit. It's a little hard one. It's a little bit hard, too. Yeah. Oh, God. I'll give you a little time to think yeah, about Jeff, it. Make me, make me feel bad. Can you can you just name this right net, right off the top of your head? Or... Me? Yeah. Can I? I, 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 I have a guess, but I'm okay. not, not right, going right. to say for sure. Um, play one more time for me. One more time, please. Uh, you got it. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach. All right. So the scenario is something about leaving room. I hope you left enough room for my fist. Because <laughs> I am going to ram it into your stomach. Wow, that is that's that's classic Schwarzenegger there, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a tough one. Shit. All right. Um. Take, I, I'll um, give you one hint. I'm, this is way back. I'm, I'm gonna go with Total Recall, but I don't. It, it's got the the it's he, he's got the the emotion of it, but I don't mm -hmm. think it is. But that's all I can come up with. I don't think so. All right, uh, Jeff, what do you think it was? I thought it was Commando. Okay, so you're both <laughs> wrong. Okay, <laughs> it is Running Man. That was oh, Running, running Man, man. Oh, classic. Yeah. 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 So, all right. All right. Sorry, Good sorry, Good. So that, right. That's okay. That's all right. all right. All right. So, so Jeff, here you go. Here's your second one. Okay. My CPU is a neural net processor, a learning computer. 
All right, now we all know what character that is. That's e that part's easy. Which did this come from? Okay. That's the hard I part. I believe that's Terminator 2. Jeff? That is correct. T2. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. How does baby food taste, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> now, next, the that's, next one is going to be it's, like it's, this. Okay, Mike, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not a thing. Mike, it, right. it, it, it tastes the best when you spoon fed it. Right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So, Mike, here's your third one. Your clothes. Give them to me. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. I I appreciate that. Yeah. That would be from the first a Terminator movie. Hey, Mike. Yes. That is thank correct. You. <laughs> wow. Great. Well, even <laughs> there was even the sun can shine on a dog's ass once in a while. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Here you go. Ready. You're one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> That's the predator. Yes, that is correct. Very good. Now, see, good. I would is... argue whether that is an. Can we say that is an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Because that that had a semi all star. I guess at the time he was the biggest bill. Well, I think you could have Thanks. argued that better for the Batman reference. Yeah. Well, yeah. most certainly. Thank you, Jeff. Thank. <laughs> <laughs> good point, Jeff. Very good point. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. You can say what you want, but Arnold made the most money off that movie and had the least amount right. of air time. He made 40, I remember this, he made 40 million, and that was more than Clooney and whoever that, what the fuck was Robin? I can't remember his name. Uh, Who cares? Yeah, whatever. Both of them put together. So, and, and Schwarzenegger had like fucking three lines in the whole damn movie. Right. One like, of them was, where's my wife? So Yes, that was one of the lines, Mike. Yes, so, it was. So you had a one in five chance of getting that one. All right, Mike. Mike, you're up. Ready? Here you All go. Right, here we go. Oh, Christ. You're going to kill me. All right, here we go. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you already. Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? I lied. All right, now that's an easy one. All right, give me it again. Maybe give All me right, it again. Ready? Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? I lied. I'm, I'm missing the first word of that. Remember. Right, so listen close, listen. Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? I lied. The first word is remember. Yeah, I know. I, I just, it's remember Sally? Mm -hmm. Remember... Hey Jeff, can I can I give Mike a tiny bit of a hint since he's so far behind? Oh yeah, absolutely. Give a problem. With that. All right, he's holding a guy by one foot over a cliff. That's a dead giveaway. If you don't get this right, this is your own fault. I gave you a really great hint. Yeah, but I I'm and Sally on... is a guy, huh? Sally is a guy. Yeah, I'm blanking on the name of a movie because all I can think about is Cliffhanger and I know he was not in that that was Stallone, Stallone. I know nothing, the name has nothing to do with him holding a dude over a cliff it just that just happens to be where he's I, I know it. you're not repeating movies right no no repeats uh, um, this goes way back <clears throat> yeah yeah Take a guess. Just pick an old movie of his. Dude, I I can't even think. I mean, uh, can I give him a hint? Eraser, but that's not even way back. That's a newer. So I mean, not newer, but well, newer from a heyday. But that's all I can say is Eraser. Okay, that is Jeff. What do you think? It was Commando. That is Commando, Jeff. Oh. But Damn it. No, you don't get the point for that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff. Here's yours. Okay. And we've got we've got uh, this is yours. Then we'll do one more round, and then we do the the the, the finishing round where we do multiple points. Okay. Oh, oh so, boy. So, so so Jeff, here you go. I want to ask you a bunch of questions, and I want to have them answered immediately. Oh wow. Okay. Ask me a bunch of questions. Answer immediately. Um, 
I'm going to go with twins. You're in the right vein, but nope, that was Kindergarten Cop. Oh. He's talking to the class of kids. <laughs> There's a bunch of questions. God damn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sorry. Some of these are a little hard. No, sorry. Listen, listen. It's a fun game. Yeah. <laughs> We're learning. All right, so Mike, here you go. Here's here's your last one before the bonus round. Okay, ready? Great. Can't wait. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. You are terminated. You could get a point by process of elimination. I'm not duplicating any movies. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that would have that would have been Terminator Three. Mike, you got a point. Wow, two points to bet with. There you go. I'm a right. baller. So, Jeff, here you go. Here's your last one. Okay. Now, whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. Oh. This is classic. Mike, you know this one, don't you? Yeah, I know it. I know it. Okay, I know it. You know right? <laughs> Thank you. I'll feel good if I knew one that, you know, maybe Jeff didn't know. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Was this total recall? Jeff, that is correct. Very good. Recall. Very good. I'm proud of you, buddy. <laughs> All right. So it's two to four. So how can I do this? I thought it might be a little closer. Um, oh, it doesn't matter. It, it, right. it, obviously, I'm betting all my points. Right, right. Jeff, Jeff you is would... betting all his points. <laughs> Jeff, you have no, to I... bet at least one. And Mike, That's you can bet, bet all your points. One. Yes. I want to give I'm gonna give Mike a chance to win, so I'm just gonna bet the house. Oh, bet the house. Oh, so I'm either gonna right. I'm either gonna smoke them, or, or get get trounced. Or, yes. All right. So I want you. This you're gonna have to write your answer down for this one, okay? Or just yeah. I'll trust you. I'll trust okay. you. I'll trust you. No, I got I, this. I, I'll totally trust you. Okay. I'll wait till Jeff is ready. Let's see. Grab a pen. Okay. Oh, right, well, that's we because go. we both have to answer. Is that why? What's that? Yeah, you're both going to have to answer. You're both going to bet your points. So how much, Mike, you're betting what? You're betting the house, and, and okay. Jeff, you're betting the house. So great. Yep. Okay, that works. All right, so here we go. Here's the last one, and it's worth whatever points you bet. Ready? The greatest feeling you can get in a gym or the most satisfying feeling you can get in a gym is the pump. <laughs> I just thought that was a funny sample. Write your answers down. <laughs> Here, Mike, I'll play it again for you. The greatest feeling you can get in a gym or the most satisfying feeling you can get in a gym <laughs> is the pump. The pump. The pump. <laughs> All right. Since I know that Jeff's going to kick my ass on this, I made up a funny answer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to kick yourself, okay? Because you're ready, right? You're locked in? Yeah. Because Jeff mentioned... All right, go ahead, Jeff. What do you think? Pumping iron. Yes. 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 Mike. And I... Heart. Pumping Pete. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Jeff was going to get that. I, I clued in. I knew you guys talked about it earlier. <laughs> Let him pour like, on you knew. It's, but you say you couldn't remember what it was? No, I remembered it, but I knew. Look, if I bet, he bets. I knew he was going to get it right. Oh, so okay. I, I just, all, right. all right. Very good. Very good. Well, I clown pumping, theoried it. I clown with, theoried it. Right. With <laughs> pumping Pete, that was obvious that you had an idea. So, Jeff, this is what you get for winning. Sorry, that's all we have to offer. <laughs> it's I picture the Rand, Randy the Macho Man Savage walking down the aisle. This is yeah. <laughs> Yes. It's more than what most people get from our show, yes, so that is, consider that yourself lucky. True. That is true. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that is our show. Make sure – so Jeff has – he has an active Kickstarter right now. This wasn't a Kickstarter show. I mean, it's just some adventures, which is cool, very cool. Um, this, this was our regular – oh, Jesus Christ. Give it a second. Hold on. God damn OBS. Uh-oh. Hold on. And we're back. Now, OBS has this thing. I, I don't know if they're going to fix it or not, but this is the second time it's happened. It disconnects, but then OBS reconnects. So it automatically does it, which is cool. It jumps back into the Facebook, so it's good to go. But whenever it does that, we got to like take a pause. So anyway, 
Everybody, thanks for watching. Um, and, and go check out Jeff's Kickstarter. Go check out Hyper Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. It's fantastic. If you go to uh, Total Con or you go to Gary Con or North Texas Con, if he's there, um, or Carnage, go make sure you play. And I'm going to make sure I play next year, Jeff. I haven't actually played the game. I need to because it looks really cool. Um, one of the things I didn't ask you, you said there's no elves or anything. Like, are there any races or is it just all humans? Well, there's different different races and cultures of humanity. And some okay. of them mirror, mirror real world races and some of them are uh, made up mythological ones. But they're, I want to play an elf, play different. a little person. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but they're all kind of like, they're all basically humans, right? They're all humans. Yes, that's exactly, okay. that's exactly all right. Fantastic. right. That kind of reminds me of... Um, Merp, remember the old Merp ice game? Mm -hmm. uh, it was yep. uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, yep. Middle Earth role playing. You uh, had Talislanta like... was like that too, I mm -hmm. think. Well, Talislanta didn't have any elves, but you could play. Right, like... but they did have other weird Everything. races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Talislanta. Talislanta was a fun game. All right. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> let's I wrap this... that. Let's wrap this up. Did you play Talislanta, Mike? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, let me do the thing where I do this. Yes. Yeah. And that, all right. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. Uh, we're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guest questions or just banter with the other Mythfits in the room. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Yes, I did catch up with all the episodes. Uh, once, uh, or you can listen at mythwits.podbean.com. Do like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out tsrpn.com for more cool shows. And Laura and James. Laura was in the chat room. Laura and James are coming back with Game School. And Jeff has confirmed he's going to be our first guest. So we're going to do uh, we're going to do Hyperborea. Sure, just uh, let me know the date. Yeah, I will. I will do that. It's, it's going to be sometime in May. We'll do the recording. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And buy crumb. Don't slaughter people with it. Make sure to check out Studio187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. It's not a tumor. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Nice. <laughs> so it's little uh <laughs> little uh wise owl and uh, uh...